Hi there folks, uh, it's me again, with um, a few new things to announce, um, RE, the Fallout 3 Let's Play, it's going to be back pretty damn soon, um, I am on holiday at the minute, as most of you should hopefully be aware, um, and so therefore there isn't much in the way of videos going up at the minute, however, got a little bit of time coming up, um, where I'm, I've, I've been able to set aside to do a little bit of recording, and I figured I might as well do some Fallout 3, since I'm happy to announce the video, the test video I did for Fallout 3 earlier, um, where I was doing some mod tweaking and stuff like that. Uh, it did not, in fact, get flagged at all by the content ID system, and is totally squeaky clean, and ready to go, which should mean that hopefully, because there was plenty of background music playing nice and loud in that video, which should hopefully mean that we sh I can get back on schedule with this. I'm still going to have to take some precautions. Uh, I'm going to have to try and switch off radios wherever I find them playing, and I won't be able to use my actual Pip Boy radio, unfortunately. But um, that is just the way of things, I reckon. Unfortunately, that's just just what you've got to do. Compromise you've got to make, I guess. Um, maybe at some point, you know they'll be able to get it so that those exact versions of the songs don't get flagged either because they are part of the game's soundtrack after all but I'm not particularly optimistic on that front because they are licensed songs most of them so anyway I'm not going to take that risk and I'm just going to play it as per usual um, I, there is of course the option to turn off what am I doing um, turn off radios entirely in here um, I may consider doing that I mainly want it on though for now just so that we can occasionally tune in and listen to 3Dog on the radio potentially at, at certain points without having to and, th and then immediately switching off as soon as the music starts basically that's what I'm saying um, I don't necessarily want to remove that entirely from the game but of, of course I may have to occasionally mute the radio completely if needs be. I, I believe there is a mod which you can get which makes it so all the radios in the world are by default actually turned off when you first enter a room with them in there. Um, I may install that. In fact, I almost certainly will get around to installing that because that would actually be really helpful. Um, so yeah, other than that, um, mod feedback was very helpful. I'm going to be sticking with the um, this version of the Flora Overhaul been playing around with it, testing and stuff like that. I quite like it. Um, it's potentially not in everybody's tastes, but it's in mine, so obviously I'm going to be keeping it and using it. I really like Vert's mods, um, especially for New Vegas and Morrowind, and uh, this one is no exception. I like it a lot. Um, some people did point out that coniferous forests like these are not really native to the, the Washington DC area in real life, but Eh, I guess you'll just have to suspend your disbelief a bit. I mean, it doesn't bother me because I'm, I am don't even live remotely near the Washington, D.C. And I have gone into this game knowing... Explosion in the distance, wonderful. Um, I've gone into this game not knowing anything really about the geography of the area anyway. Um, honestly, I suppose if you really wanted to rationalise it, you could say that these trees actually have grown after the bombs fell. Um, they're a bit stunted looking as you can tell, probably from the irradiated soil and stuff like that, but they are, technically speaking, alive or whatever. Um, they're just really crappy trees, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Um, and the fact that they're all coniferous ones may make sense, because I believe someone in the comments pointed out that coniferous trees are usually the first ones to grow back after a forest fire, because they're just more sort of hardy, I guess, than the irregular sort of deciduous trees or whatever they're called. Anyway, um... So, um, other than that, that, that we're keeping. I've gotten rid of the first person mod. Um, I, it's fair to say I think most people were okay with it, but there were a significant number of people who um, basically said that um, it gave, made them feel a bit... Uh, and of course it wouldn't be one of my videos without a police car. My god, there hasn't been one on this road for like the last three hours, I swear to you. And the, f the moment I start recording, one of them drives past. Uh, you might not have picked it up, actually, though, to be honest. Um, because I have a new microphone. Yes, I have a new microphone. Um, I forgot to mention that, actually. And now I'm using a Rode Podcaster. It was very, very expensive. And See, look, you see what I mean? I three or four hours with nothing, and then two of them in the space of about 30 seconds. My God. Anyway. <sighs> 
the world is trolling me today, folks. It really is. I um, I I read a bit of a panic moment earlier actually, in that um, the damn game was crashing every like ten minutes. This way, whenever I got to combat. It turns out it's because I had a duplicated line in my INI file, which I didn't know about. Um, and it took three hours of me messing around, installing fixes for this and that and the other, until I finally figured out what the problem was. Was I mean, I'm not expecting miracles. This game's pretty bloody buggy. Um, I've been playing a lot of Fallout New Vegas recently, and um, that game is just, for me, for whatever reason, far, far, far more stable than this one. This Fallout 3 loves to crash all the bloody time, but hopefully now I've sorted the INI rubbish out... And I've also installed the unofficial patch, which previously wasn't installed. I have no idea why. I was actually operating the whole time under the assumption that it was installed. Um, but it turns out it actually wasn't, in reality. Um, I just thought it was, and it wasn't. But anyway, I've installed the unofficial patch now, which seems to have helped quite a bit with a few things. Um, let's see what else. Uh, yeah, like I said, I've removed the first person view thing mod because some people were complaining it was making them feel a little bit more but you know nauseous and you know that it was enough people for it to be a problem so I got rid of it and frankly I don't think it'll be too missed because the bugginess was an issue and while it was a cool idea um, ultimately it probably needs some work before I consider using it in the let's play so anyway there you go um, in addition to that, um, I think that's everything. I think that no, well, I've done actually I've done a little bit of modding of my own, believe it or not. Um, as I said, I've been I was playing a lot of New Vegas recently, and actually when I booted this game up after that, um, one of the more jarring differences I noticed was just how well. Now I, I have to say, like New Vegas's animations are not particularly amazing. Don't get me wrong, but Fallout 3s are much much worse. Um, and it was particularly jarring going into this game and seeing all those old default Fallout 3 animations at work, especially the running and walking animations, and it was actually really distractingly bad. So I did a little bit of modding on my end, and I actually copied over the, um, the animations for, you know, the humanoid characters from Fallout New Vegas to my Fallout 3 folder, and lo and behold, it actually works like a charm, as you can see. Um... All the running, walking, aiming animations have been changed to the ones that you find when you play Fallout New Vegas. Um, so there you go, even the idle animations are different, I believe. So uh, there you are, I just prefer them. Um, they're not great, but they're slightly better, in my honest opinion. And so I'm going to be using those. Um, so yeah, um, in, case if, in, in case anyone notices, oh, your animations are different, why is that not in your listed mods? in the description it's because it's not actually a mod that I downloaded it's one I it's just a bit of tweaking I did myself um, it's pretty simple really all I did was copy across the the animations from Fallout New Vegas and put them in the Fallout 3 data folder and um, that's it really um, and one other thing I did so along similar lines was uh, when I got back into the game I loaded up this save which was here outside Fort Independence and I noticed that the Brotherhood of Steel outcasts um, Power armor textures were rubbish. <laughs> if I'm quite honest, um, I have a lot of texture places for New Vegas. New Vegas looks, in my opinion, considerably better than my Fallout 3 installation does, just because there are a lot more graphical update mods for Fallout New Vegas. Um, the, the New Vegas Nexus is just bigger and better than the Fallout 3 one, um, basically. Um, so I couldn't find a decent power armor replacer, so I just basically used the textures I have currently in my New Vegas installation. And copied them across to here, and so this is what the outcasts look like now. Yeah, they don't have all the red stuff all over their armor, that's true. Um, but you can still tell the difference because they've got a red badge on their um, shoulders, whereas the Brotherhood of Steel, the regular ones, have a, have their own Brotherhood of Steel emblem on there and stuff like that. And um, I like it a lot more, much better texture. Uh, I've been using this one. I think it's from the Born Again... Uh, Book of Steel texture pack for Fallout New Vegas um, but yeah there's a lot of power armor in this game a lot, a lot more power armor in this game ironically than there is in New Vegas like you find the stuff all over the damn place in Fallout 3 uh, and so I figured even though it's not much of an issue now since we're a long way off owning our own suit of power armor I'd um I did, I did install a replacer for that myself which was using the one from New Vegas um, so there you go
I also did it for the T51B armor, although that's rare as hell, so you probably won't see that. But anyway, yeah, that was also, this is also just in case people sort of notice these guys next time I come back to Fort Independence and like, well, well what texture replacer did you use for them? You don't have it listed in your, in your mods. Well, again, it's because I did it myself, basically. Um, so there you go, there you go, there you go, that's pretty much everything. Um, and, um, yeah, Fallout 3 is going to be coming again soon, I'm going to probably record some, an episode of it today. Um, I've spent a while looking back over my old episodes, trying to recap and kind of try and remember what the hell I was doing <laughs> when we left off last time. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be coming back soon. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm at home with crappy internet at the minute, so, um, yeah, the, the, um, the, the, the upload is going to be very, very slow indeed. In fact, this video is probably going to take forever, but hey, um, and there's everything I can think of now, and then, yeah, this is going to be coming back soon. I am probably going to go with the plan I had in my head previously, which I mentioned in my mailbox video, whereby I alternate between uploading this and Oblivion every week. Um, bit of this one week, bit of oblivion next week, so on and so forth, unless I decide to change up the my my hypothetical timetable a bit more. Still no final thoughts on that, I'm afraid. Um, that's all going to be after Easter anyway, so... Anyway, that's basically it. Um, thought I'd keep, keep you guys updated and notified on what's going on. And save the trouble of having to explain all this mod-related crap at the beginning of the actual episode. Um... Because that annoys people to no end, and uh, I suppose that's fair enough, really. So if I get that all the way uh, out of the way now, rather than in the actual episode, so much the better. So there you go, yeah. That should hopefully solve people's questions. I'll probably shove it in the playlist just to make sure people do see it before I get a bunch of questions asking me, like, where do these textures and animations come from, and why does your microphone sound different? <laughs> all that kind of crap, so, yeah. Um... Microphone-wise, yeah, I hope that, hey, it should be an improvement. I hope it is. Um, I think it is. Uh, you guys will be the judge of that, I'm sure. Some of you probably won't even be able to tell the difference, because that's often the way with things. But, yeah, it should be a different... It should be better. I hope it's better. It cost me a ludicrous amount of money, to be honest with you. I've wanted one of these microphones for ages, but couldn't afford it for a long time. But I've got one now, and it was very expensive, because I not only bought the microphone, I bought a shock stand for it, too, to reduce noise from vibrations. But, um, yeah. It seems to be better quality on the whole, and also as a, it, it just I don't know. It's it seems to work better than the old one. Not only in actual voice quality that you get in the videos, but also simply because it doesn't pick up nearly as much background noise as the old one did. Uh, the old one was really bad for that. You, it could pick up noises that were happening in the room next door. Sometimes um, you could hear door slamming elsewhere in the house on that microphone during videos. I picked it. I picked up that kind of noise like nobody's business especially for my computer's fans but with this microphone it's not an issue i don't even have to put noise gating on the audio tracks for this anymore so yeah big improvement anyway i shall see you all again soon i will stop babbling and hopefully this video isn't so long that it takes me a million years to upload because dear god it probably will never mind see you next time folks <laughs>